everyone and welcome to today's video so you join me at our new home so um something that i've been talking about in the videos for a while we were purchasing another one but that actually fell through so we would get messed about by uh the other person selling the house we managed to buy this one in sort of five weeks so you can see we've got the r56 on the driveway brz uh the range Rover's not here at the moment so that's out um having a service done and then the r53 is still with uh, rkde so he's just looking after that for me while we were moving so uh the good thing for me is this is definitely a house where we can sort of build onto so there's lots of scope for improvements if you can see over that that garage there's a flat roof we'll be doing lots of extension work and stuff over the top of that but the big selling point for me and the videos is the fact we've got that big double garage so for anyone that's followed the channel for a while we actually had um a, a little single garage down the side of the house which was a little bit difficult to actually try and work on the cars inside well i couldn't i had to do everything on the driveway the good thing with this is i've got an engineer coming out to sort the garage doors because the, the electric opener isn't working at the moment but there's plenty of space in there to do lots of work so let's check if it's open it is so they should be automatic and i mean it's as you can see it's full of stuff at the moment because we're obviously moving in so we've only been in three weeks or so but the plan is once we've done the building work over the top of the garage is to actually give this garage a, a bit of a makeover you can see it's just full of junk at the moment but there's water in here there's plenty of electric so i want to try and get a bit of a sink and a sort of a worktop set up at the back keeping plenty of room to be able to work on the cars definitely already had uh, a couple of cars in here so i know they fit so i think this side is sort of a little bit shorter than the other so again please excuse all the mess there's uh lots going on at the moment in terms of organizing the new house so the big news for me is i am back the channel is going to be having lots of new content so i've already been out today i've had the day off so i've been filming lots of new content to upload to the channel so i've already got three videos um that i need to edit and upload and we've got lots more performance stuff coming with the r56 um so what i wanted to do is just catch up because i promised you in the last video that i'd give you an update on the air suspension on the r56 so if you see now it's sitting nice and low um but i wanted to give you your my honest opinion in terms of how it actually drives so what we'll do we'll go and jump in the r56 now and i'll just talk you through sort of the the positives and the negatives of having air ride okay so now we're out on the open road so let's talk about the uh air lift performance kit so it's been four months roughly three four months it's been on the car now so i think it was beginning of december um and obviously i went with the air kit so i could raise it up and down so the car park at the office that i'm now um, commuting to has really steep uh, slopes and speed bumps in there that I just couldn't get up if the car was anywhere near low. So I think the, given having the flexibility of a push of a button and it is literally that. So the way I've got the uh, setup mounted, um, I can literally press a button down here by the CD player and raise the car up so it's perfect for that. Um, also, um, I wanted the ability to go super low for looks it's as simple as that so um i know some people are afraid to say that they do performance mods or any mods at all for the fact they just like the look of them well that's why i've got a cage in this car I like the fact that it's got a cage in it doesn't see a track so is it overkill for the road yeah probably but i like the fact i've got a cage in my car and i'm not going to shy away from that and it's the same with the the suspension so i think the the fact i can move the front number plate drop it down low take some really good photos um, for YouTube and social media and whatever else and it's ideal for that um, I think in terms of the way it handles and drives so let's give some honest feedback so is it set up like a track car no um, I've not sent it to be set up either so it's purely how I've bolted it onto the car is how it handles and drives that's the setup um, it's no better no worse than i would say any entry level coilovers to the likes of the bc's meister r's ap's 
all those sort of general coilovers that people tend to get into for about seven, eight hundred pound, um, up to a thousand maybe. I have absolutely no concerns that this this suspension setup handles just as well as they do. It has the same um, and it's probably more in terms of adjustability. So you have dampening and adjustability, so you can stiffen the ride if you want to stiff a ride. You can soften it if you want to. It's not a problem. Um, obviously you have the height adjustability like you do on coilovers and obviously this setup that I went with comes with adjustable top mounts as well so you can adjust that camber as much as you want so I, I would honestly say that I wouldn't swap this setup for any of those coilovers at all I have all the benefits of the coilover setup with the functionality to go up and down as well so for me it's a massive thumbs up I'm really really happy with the setup and um, I've got no sort of uh, negative thoughts in my head in terms of I wish I'd stayed with coilovers. Okay so let's talk about some of the negative points because I've been positive in the video so far but there are negatives um, to an air setup so I just want to cover those off. So first of all boot space, you are going to lose some boot space somewhere within the car so whether um, in my setup I'm going to be putting it under the cage so you lose that bit of storage area most people put it in the actual boot itself if they've got back seats so you are going to lose that space which for some people that's a negative for me I don't care there's loads of room back there and I don't use any of it so I'm not fussed about losing it price so price point is a big negative for a lot of people so I'm not going to lie I know Aries air setups are a lot more expensive than the equivalent entry price or entry level coilovers. So you're looking at 800 pound for a set of entry level coilovers. This air setup, I think he's sort of over 2,000 pound, maybe two and a half, 3,000, maybe new. So I didn't purchase any new, I got mine new, so it was significantly cheaper than that. But I certainly get that other people obviously aren't, maybe not be able to pick up a bargain like I did, would have to pay the full price. So yes, it, price point is certainly an issue. Um, but if you can get over that, I think, the benefits that I've sort of summed up outweigh that for sure. And I think the only other thing that I would say with my setup at the moment is the compressor noise. So um, I've had to hard mount it so the compressor that I got didn't come with rubber feet. So it should do but they were missing so they must have been left in the previous owner's car or something because they certainly weren't with it. So mine's hard mounted to a piece of wood so you get a lot of vibration through the car that needs to be sorted out. So I will be looking at how I can reduce the sound from the compressor. Um, one, obviously getting the rubber mounts for it. Two, is there any way you can box it up or do something to get rid of the noise. But even then the compressor doesn't run all the time. Like I'm driving now, there's no compressor running. It's only when you, you're sort of lowering and raising the car, lots of the empty, obviously empties the tank, and you need to fill that back up with compressed air. So I don't know whether you can pick that up on camera, but that's the compressor sound. So that's what you hear. So that's what I have to sort of pull with when I've sort of raised the car up um, and pull off. And obviously the compressor needs to fill the tank back up to the full point. So that's sort of the, the hum you get in the background. Um, you get used to it. And it certainly, like I've said, it doesn't run all the time. It's only when you're raising it up and down, up and down a couple of times that it will actually empty the tank and you need to top it up a bit so it's just something to bear in mind I know there's lots of options I've seen online where you can actually mount the um, compressors under the car on the outside um, not sure I mean the, there's definitely connections and I've definitely seen it done I know it's made to do that they are weather tight from what I've seen um, but yeah that's, that's an option to solve that problem so I'm going to be doing a bit of research see what other people do whether it's the, the need for a bigger tank maybe, um, so it, it's having to run less, not sure. So, but lots of lots of options anyway, and it's certainly not a, a, a deal breaker for me in terms of getting rid of it. So, other than that, I am like super happy. I'd fully recommend it. So if someone obviously asked me, oh, I'm building a track car, what suspension should I get? Obviously I'm not gonna recommend the air, but for anyone on a street car, I honestly can't see, other than the, the price point, 
I can't see why you would go over entry level coilovers. Obviously it's completely different when you start looking at the more expensive coilovers and comparing it to those, but I don't think it's the same market, so I don't think it's a fair comparison, sort of comparing KW Club Sports and Nitrons and things like that, the, the really expensive coilovers or the getting up to the higher uh, coilovers. I just don't think it's the same audience that would also want an air setup, so I don't think it's a fair comparison. So yeah, four months on, wouldn't remove it, really happy with it. So the air's here to stay and to the point that I did this actually to see whether I'd consider air on the BRZ. And I'd say yes, so I am on the lookout for a, an air setup for the uh, Subaru BRZ as well. So I can throw that on there because that car sits even lower than any of my minis ever have. So I think I'd really benefit from being, having the ability to raise it up and down. So, if anyone knows of anyone selling a, a set of airlift performance um, course and management for a BRZ, give me a shout. So, if you like the video, please hit that like button and subscribe. And if you hit that notification bell, you'll get alerts every time we upload new content. So, there's plenty more coming over the next few months. So, if you look out for the next video, um, we're going to start on the performance side of things on the engine. So, first of all, I want to get it on a dyno. So Keep an eye out for that video coming very soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.